Good evening. It's Tuesday, August 13, 2013, and this is a um, public hearing on proposed changes to the District Code of Conduct for the Rhinebeck Central School District uh, Board of Education. And um, I'm going to turn over the hearing to Superintendent Joe Perry. Sure. Uh, we are required by, uh, uh, by Commissioner's regulation to provide an opportunity uh, whenever we uh, do our annual review of our code of conduct if there are any suggested changes to be made to allow people who might be interested in uh, in commenting to do so uh, to be honest uh, uh, in for the probably 10 plus years we've been doing this we have rarely if ever had an outpouring uh, or even a person I think uh, other than uh, members of the press uh, be here, but uh, we were required to do that, and uh, at least this gives us an opportunity um, by uh, recording this for Panda to review what the changes are. Uh, again, some some years the changes recommended by the stakeholder committee that the regulation requires um, to review the policy and make suggestions has a lot, and sometimes. The changes are minimal, and this year is, I think, more on the minimal side of things. Uh, there, there are several items that the committee uh, recommended that we uh, we change uh, regarding the student uh, dress code. Uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a section of the student dress code that addresses the length of uh, uh, shorts and skirts. Uh, currently, the policy says that they should not be shorter than mid-thigh. Uh, the uh, committee is recommending that we change that to say that shorts and skirts should not be uh, of a length as to be materially disruptive. Uh, uh, we don't, uh, you know, we don't spend our time with a tape measure uh, measuring that kind of stuff, but actually um, use the overall guideline for student dress code issues that's uh, that's in in the regulation, which states that if it's materially disruptive, then then it's problematic, and we deal with it. So they're suggesting we make that that change, and it's probably as much a, uh, a much a nod to the fact that uh, 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 parents uh, of of young uh, young female students just flat out have a hard time <laughs> purchasing finding shorts and skirts that are mid-thigh or longer. So uh, uh, as a father of three boys, I can't really relate to that, but uh, I'll take their word for it. Um, the next uh, uh, recommendation that's being made is to, uh, to the section that addresses uh, possession and or use of tobacco in any form on campus or at school functions as a violation of our code of conduct the committee recommended that we we include electronic cigarettes in that uh, as part of that infraction. In fact, I heard uh, apparently there's legislation that's been introduced that would uh, that would address electronic cigarettes and specifically would ban them from from schools uh, and school campuses. It hasn't passed; it's just been introduced. But uh, it seems like that's the way some people are are thinking. Um, on the next page uh, is uh, the, the third item that the committee is recommending, and uh, that is regarding the uh, uh, the uh, penalties for for gambling. And I think what what the administrators are finding anyway is that uh, gambling is being uh, interpreted rather broadly by members of the staff, uh, even when there's no. Uh, money involved it's just it's a game of chance like cards but they're not playing for money and some people are interpreting that as as gambling members of the staff that is uh, and uh, our administrators would like to uh, expand the range of consequences for uh, for that offense currently um, uh, gambling uh, requires a uh, you know a suspension uh, and I think they're they're feeling that um, if, the, if we broaden the available consequences, starting with you know, a parent 
parent contact and and kind of work through the progression of of discipline that that's uh, that's a little more reasonable and allows the administrators to tailor the the consequence toward what actually is is happening. So again, uh, nothing to uh, uh, to a wild and crazy, but uh, several uh, several items that our committee has recommended that we consider changing, and we've done a first reading uh, at our last meeting in uh, in earlier July with those changes made. So uh, we would be doing a second reading tonight, and if if that's approved by uh, a unanimous vote of the four board members who are here, then that would include those changes in the code of conduct in time to be able to let parents and kids know that those changes are in effect as of the beginning of the school year. So. That's the, right, thank you. That's the lowdown. Anyone You're have welcome. any questions? It's a public hearing. Any members of the public? No? Okay. Um, and that committee is comprised of several teachers, administrators, and parents. That's correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and a student, a high and school a student, student okay, is a member right. of that as well, yeah. And is convened for this very purpose. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, there being no other questions or comments, then. I close this hearing Great. and um, we'll take a short break and then we'll resume our regular meeting at mm -hmm. 730. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening again. This is uh, a meeting of the Rhinebeck Central School District Board of Education, it's Tuesday, August 13th, 2013. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the July 9th, 2013 annual organizational and regular meeting. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by? Seconded. Deirdre. Uh, any amendments to those minutes? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We now have an opportunity for public comment. Any comment from the public? Okay, we're passing on that. Then we move to reports and discussion. And the first item is our 2013-14 um, board goal development process. So, um, so we uh, people had sent emailed me ideas about board goals. The board had a workshop on a variety of process issues, and um, and um, we touched upon board goals at that at that workshop. Uh, so I tried to take what people's ideas have been thrown around and just try to collect them into a few, at least to get sort of the categories that board goals might fall into. Um, the wording is definitely a work in progress. I tried to look, just literally open up what people's ideas were and some of the thoughts that would come out of the workshop and say, okay, like where would this maybe work? Um, I don't feel like we've had like a full enough conversation with everybody to really work out wording. So these are sort of mm -hmm. just my thoughts mm -hmm. based on what little information. And then I took um, some of the suggestions from board goals and thought, well, they might go better really directly into a committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so suggested that. Um, I will say, um, you know, one piece of feedback I got from um, Diane Lyons, who can't be here tonight, is she. Um, recalled that maybe at our workshop we talked about possibly reviewing our mission and vision statement and would we want to make that a goal. Um, I don't recall like a longer conversation. I feel like that happened sort of the end of the workshop so I'm not sure where people feel about that. And um, so here's what I, uh, you know, we can talk about it to the extent the four of us can and then what I'm thinking the process will be though is whatever other input from, from us tonight or from people who are away and can't be here that we can get ahead of our meeting on the 27th, try to work on adding, changing, editing, refining it as much as we can, and certainly with input from Joe as well. And then, um, you know, but, but the fullest conversation won't really be until the 27th when we're all here. But I open it up now for any comments or thoughts at all about it right now, so see if we're maybe even headed in the right direction. Mark? Well, I haven't really had a chance to fully digest these because I just uh, am reading them now because they came out this afternoon, but I mean, it looks like a good start, so I would, you know, have to have had some time to 
thoroughly uh, think about it and maybe I make a comment or two, but I, I mean, it seems like a good, uh, good start to the uh, goals for this year. I, I agree with Mark. Um, just a question about some of the past board goals mm -hmm. that we've read, and um, I think I mentioned it at, at one point. At, um, during some years, we had how do we do this? You know, these are the goals, and then how do we hope to accomplish these goals? Um, and that seemed to be to be a nice way to direct the end result, as opposed to creating a goal and then maybe not really having any defined way of measuring right having reached it. I don't know how we feel about that, why it was done in the past and then not for other years and, and whether that's something we want to include again. Yeah. In this year. Yeah, no, I remember that was one of your suggestions and partly I thought um, as I was doing it, I was very mindful of that and the issue of do we do how specific do we get versus how general. And we talked about that at the workshop too. So, sort of what's the board's role? Right. Setting a vision or specifics? I didn't, I tried to just take the ideas and I thought, well, let's look at what categories and then figure out are there specific things that we want to see happen. I mean, I think it is, it can be helpful. I think, I mean, I don't want to speak for Joe. Mm -hmm. I think it can. Finding that right balance is important because you want to know if people have, if the board has something very specific they want to see accomplished, then you want to know about it. Well, I, and as I look at these, just to that point, um, the, the, the technology and food service goals uh, as they're drafted here are, are pretty focused, pretty specific, and actually have embedded in them things that are going to be done. Development of an action plan, hire a technology director. So they're pretty specific. The, the other, the first two, are more general. So I, you know, I would, uh, I would lobby one way or the other to either go broader and perhaps have have indicators underneath them, or to to go leaner and embed the indicators right in there. So I. That, that's kind of the way I see these chunking out. We could either go with the format of the first two, which are broader, but add the indicators to them, or rework the first two mm -hmm. to, to look more like the technology and the food service one, and really get them compact and build those. In. I mean, I think either one of them would work for me in terms of because actually, even as I'm sitting here rereading these, I. I I know what the last two mean, mm -hmm. and I, I know what the, the outcomes are going to be for those because mm -hmm. they're pretty much spelled out. I look at the communication when I'm trying to think, so exactly what does that mean? Right. What, what do board members want to see as the outcomes under that one? It, it's less clear to me, and I think the less clear it is, <laughs> whether from the goal itself or from the indicators that might uh, support that goal, the more, you know, we're going to take this into administrative meeting and sit there and say, what, <laughs> so what are you supposed to do with that one? We know, what, we know what we're supposed to do with this one. That's real specific. That one, eh, not so much. So I, I guess I like to see it go one way or the other. But either way, if there is some specificity to the outcome, that gives us something to, to really focus on. And I think at the end, excuse me, Deirdre, at the end of the, the year when we're sitting around talking about did we meet our goals, mm -hmm. we could say, yeah, we hired a director of technology and this person has already done this, 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 and this. And yes, this person's already drafted an action plan for technology for the next three to five years. Okay, yeah, we accomplished that. It's clear. Uh, so I, I that mm -hmm. would be my two cents worth at this, okay. this point. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with you, Joe, that um, the first two categories are broader, but I think there's a way that we can probably, through continuing discussion with the oh. all members, come up with what the indicators you're looking for to, to kind of mm -hmm. translate some of the goals into things that actually could be achievable within one year. But also, it strikes me, again, as someone who was really an outsider observing the work of the board, that certain kinds of goals often take several years of planning, discussion, mm -hmm. no and um, to really launch something that's going to be successful. So having that kind of differentiation in uh, the indicators, perhaps, might be useful. You know, we see this as a, a short-term goal that we might realize, or in consultation with you, Joe, and with the administrators, this seems like a feasible goal for a, a one-year time period. 
this is a two-year goal or a three-year goal, you know, to have that sense of what is feasible. And also in terms of prioritizing. So, um, and how about, um, how about the categories? I mean, mm -hmm. if people have a sense. I know, again, I mean, you guys are new, although I will say you've been in a lot of meetings. Um, <laughs> and, you know, are, do, we, do we think that's in the right direction? I mean, for communication, there were, there were several comments under board goal ideas about communication. Um, so I think that's a very important category. To yeah. If we can figure out a way to sort of hone it. To, mm -hmm. to help the right. administrators. And some of the struggle I have is figuring out how to hone it so that we're supporting something the administrators do, yeah. but not necessarily direct, you know, I, you know, finding that balance, not necessarily mm -hmm. directing you in something that's overly specific that we actually haven't even really talked about, or it's just like an idea, but it's not. It's not something that's it's our job to implement. Mm -hmm. It's just try to find that balance. So, um, and communication, as you can see from previous years, has been a board goal for a while. Yeah. So. Yeah, as, as curriculum. Yeah. Right. I mean, those are kind of perennial goals and technology and food service. Even though we've talked a lot about them, probably more seriously about food service over the last couple of years, technology, maybe for a longer period of time, I, I think for the first time these goals are really getting down to to something very specific and, and I, I think given the discussion we've had about technology and what the board, the commitment that the board has made financially to put money in our budget to support that, I think not to have a goal addressing technology would would send kind of a funny message, you know, it's like they're that serious about technology, but it isn't even one of the board's right. goals, that, you know, what's with that? And, and I did make a good point that I'd want to emphasize, especially for, for the two of you uh, as, as new board members, I think we found that the goals that the board sets really do send a message to the staff. Mm -hmm. And I think, by and large, many of the staff take that that vision that the board lays out in its goals pretty seriously. If, if, if it's technology, then that sends a powerful message to the staff that it's not just about dollars and cents, but it's also about a philosophical commitment to want to advance the district uh, right. and be serious about uh, moving our technological capacity forward. So don't, don't underplay the importance of that message to the staff. I think it is. It's key. Well, if people feel like at least the categories seem reasonable and like reflect what you know our colleagues as well have been thinking, um, you know what I can do is begin to think about reframing them so that they're more specific, but that I think we'll need to have more, I'll, like I'll need to have more input from yeah. people about what specific ideas they have about, um, you know, we've talked about web, teacher web pages and their use, um, but um, so, you know, maybe that's something specific we want to look at. Um, actually, some of them do intersect with technology, mm -hmm. I have to say. That was one yeah. of my challenges. Yeah. For example, Absolutely. you know, I, I, people, I think it was mentioned maybe by three people as board ideas about solidifying partnerships with community organizations and local colleges and universities. And, um, you know, one thought is how that could happen maybe using electronic communication more substantially or using our our website more in a ro more robust way to provide professional development opportunities. Um, the intersection between that and technology, though, is you know obvious. But maybe one goal informs the second that other goal of technology. If we mm -hmm. yeah. okay, go ahead, whoever was first. I don't know who was first. Uh, I'd also say that technology is ultimately going to have a connection with curriculum and Common Core, right? Because the ability to support. Um, the kind of testing that will be uh, coming down the road for us, if I understand it correctly, it will require sufficient 
right. infrastructure in terms of our technology in the school district. Mm -hmm. So technology really is going to be woven into, I think, both both of those uh, right. concerns with communication and with curriculum. And, um, and I, I was just going to add that um, you know the 21st century learning goal has been on the books for a long time, and it. As Deirdre said, it does sort of inform all of these things. You know, for food service, it's the point of sale system, mm -hmm. and you know, in technology, it's obvious with the cell phone and um, communication. You know, it, it's just how do we speak more broadly to our, our community and our parents and mm -hmm. our faculty. And, and so I think you know, to weave 21st century learning specifically into each goal and rather than having a 21st century goal. Right. Yeah. Um, Which I guess maybe shows that we're making some progress on that goal, actually. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you know, in, ter in terms of whether those are the right four mm -hmm. things, I guess you know, the question I would ask uh, and ask you to ask is, is there any more important or pressing need that rises above any of those four? Because if there is something that the board feels we really need to do that is of paramount importance, then it should be on that list. I mean, there will always be more things than we can reasonably list and accomplish. I mean, there will always be a bucket full of things, important things to do, but I think this is an opportunity to really focus on the two or three or four most important, most critical things that we want to accomplish. And if, if we walk away from those four headings and say, no, that's, those are the most important things we can do in the coming year, then I think those, those topics are worthy topics. If we're sitting here and saying, yeah, but I think some, this is maybe more important than that, then that ought to come up now yeah. before we finalize this and not just as an add-on we'll just throw that in as a fifth item or a sixth mm -hmm. item because now we start right. to get to a list that's that's unwieldy it's right. just we're not going to get yeah. real quality and real meat out of any of them if we have too many on the uh, on the plate so i think that's the that's to me that's the acid test is is there anything more important that we need to accomplish this year than than those four mm -hmm. things Well, so um, so this has been helpful, and I'll just send these out again uh, to everyone with sort of maybe a few adjustments or notes based on this, because I know um, Diane, Diane and Lisa are away. Um, so we'll see what, and, and from all of you, as we mull it over, I would just encourage that if you have any specific ideas, and Joe as well, um, that you want to, you know, I'll. This is sort of how we've operated, like the board president can be the repository for all the ideas. You could send it to everyone or just send it to me. And then I'll try to keep sort of working on it and hopefully we'll have another draft to discuss at our next meeting. Um, because I think it would be good if we could feel comfortable enough with what we have that the first meeting in September we can, we can vote on them. That would, that might be ambitious, depending on how much feedback people are able to provide between meetings, but that would be a nice goal. Um, if when we have the goals set at open house and we can articulate those goals to parents, I think that's a nice thing to be able to do. And this year, the middle school open house is later. It's, okay. it's always been like the first uh -huh. Tuesday right. after school starts, and it's always like, it seems like it's mm -hmm. too early. So for, for whatever reason, John mentioned to me there there's a reason, but for some reason it's a little later. So I okay. mean, we don't have we'll a lot have of extra time. time, but I think we have a little more wiggle room, maybe. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks everybody. We'll just keep working on this. Um, our next item is a discussion of paperless board of education meetings, which I believe um, Lisa originally maybe had requested, or Lisa and Lauren, to be on the agenda. Um, and there's been uh, some information Meg provided us in our packets. Um, I guess, you know, one of my um, 
thoughts about this is I think we've all come to realize is that there are a lot of very there are various issues. So last year this was taken up and um, and Paul Slayton took it upon himself to do some research about um, what people's expectations were of a board packet, what we needed out of that, and then um, costed out various possibilities. And it was the conclusion at the time, um, you can correct me, Mark, if I'm wrong, that the cost differential was so great that we weren't even going to go down that road because it was so much less expensive to just do the paper packet. And it provided everyone with what they needed, which was flexibility, portability, ease of use, easy to take notes, et cetera. But it's fine that there's an initiative to take another look at it. Certain of those um, costs have changed. But I think it would be most useful if we hand it over either to a committee on an ad hoc basis or a standing committee because the issues are so you know, we, we need someone to do kind of, I think, what happened last year is like put all the information in one place, the different items, and then mm -hmm. present it. That's kind of how we operate. So does that seem like a reasonable way to approach it? Um, I'm not sure um, where it might fit naturally <laughs> or whether we want to see whether like last year. The other issue I want to bring up is that Meg is only with us as a clerk for a undefined, but hopefully for her sake, <laughs> short period of time. And I don't want to abuse the time that you're giving us, essentially, as remaining as board clerk, to do an enormous amount of work on this project when you're transitioning yourself. So I want to be sensitive to that as we think about you know, where we're going with this. So you know, the model could be for a board member or two to take it on, and as last time, or put it into a standing committee. I don't know if anyone has a... I'm not sure where it would go as a standing committee. I don't know that it fits naturally yeah. into any of the ones that we have currently. I think it would need to be an ad hoc uh -huh. committee right. of people who are interested in it. And I think there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a benefit for using that committee structure because we've tried, uh, in some issues you have to, but it's unwieldy having seven people have come up with that. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's e much easier for two or three people for subcommittee of the board to look at the work, do the grunt work around a smaller table and say, you know what, this is our best recommendation. Let's put it out there and see how the, the full board responds. And then maybe the full board says, you know what, we're not interested, thanks right. for the work, but we're still not ready for it. Well, that's, if that's a consensus, then so be it. I think it's a, a more efficient way to get that yeah. work. Done. So, um, I, we can't sign anyone up who's not here, or we can <laughs> let the That's minutes the best, reflect. The best way to do it. <laughs> um, I know you have some interest in it, but I'm not going to ask you like if you want to. But do you have an interest in working with Lisa, perhaps, sure, on it? Because I know you both had mentioned it, but I, I'm not putting you on the spot. Like you could also say no. I know Lisa's interested in it. I'd be happy to work with her. To, to, to okay, to assuming it. Lisa agrees to it, then maybe. What we could do is ask you two to just take all that information. What I can do is I did get a copy, Meg, of um, Paul sent me sort of his files on it. Um, light mm -hmm. liquor, right? Yeah, <laughs> and um, I can give you those files from Paul, the work he did in the format he did. And, and basically, if we could just get some some succinct sort of feedback from you guys on here are some options, here are the benefits and drawbacks of the various options, including cost, but ease of use, et cetera. Paul had sort of a matrix that I think could be helpful. Mm -hmm. That would be great, yeah. And you know, the, the, the timeline here really is only budget season. I mean, if there are budget implications, then when we begin to do the budget, which we start in December, or maybe let even earlier as we did this past year, you know, that that's that sort of would be the uh, a piece of that. Yeah, I, I would I would say though that depending on what the recommendation is and what's what the will of the full board right. is, um, if there were a recommendation prior to next school year, depending on what the financial implications mm -hmm. are, there may be possibilities. So I wouldn't want to just say, you know what, we've got another 
right. nine to 12 months to, to kick this around. I, I would recommend that that committee get to work this fall, perhaps come up with a, with a recommendation by the holidays, at the very least, we can then build that into the budget process if that's the right. direction the board wants to go. There may be some things we could start to do during the second half of the school year to to move it along. So I just want to put that okay, uh, yeah, sure, put that out there. The, the other thing is that excuse me. The other thing is that uh, even even though uh, Meg will be leaving us shortly as as the board clerk, she's unfortunately still stuck as my <laughs> secretary. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, I would say that she's done an awful lot of legwork on this and is pretty invested in moving this forward, even though it won't directly impact her after hours work as board clerk. But, you know, she does work here during the school day, and I'm sure if the ad hoc committee wants to tap Meg's brain that, uh, there's no reason to start this process from from square one, no. and I think as as the board clerk for many years, Meg is is I think probably the best person, yes, that's true. much better than anybody we would bring in as a new board clerk to understand what the needs are, what the issues are, what the concerns are. So I would I, I would uh, strongly urge that this ad hoc committee keep Meg connected to the project, even if she's not. <laughs> doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> okay, definitely, yeah. Yes, Mark. I'll just say that um, I don't know how much time I have to serve on a committee, but I'd be willing to provide input at least if, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if the need arises. Because you have some technical Yeah, I mean, I'm, as offer. an IT guy, I do know a little bit about that sort of thing, but. Yeah, um, well, that's good to know for questions, sort of. I will say some of what you share with us, Meg, as not an IT person, I'm a little unclear on what they mean, so. And, and you it be. took some time in discussion to understand exactly what the gentleman was talking about in terms of differences in the different platforms and what the implications are going in one direction versus another. And I'm sure Mark would have understood in a nanosecond. Right. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'll just share with you, I think, you know, Lisa will recall this as well, but since you weren't here last year, I think the two primary issues that sort of led Paul to say, like, it clearly isn't a possibility, at least as things were last fall, were ease of use at the time, you know, whatever the technology is, has to be as easy people's expectations were, because we tried to, we tried to pilot with laptops that were cumbersome and, um, and cost were the, mm -hmm. were the big issues. So just, I think it's fair for you to know that that was the conversation last year. Um, but thank you, that would be great. Sure. I do have one question, um, mm -hmm. just in terms of, I don't know whether it's even a policy question, but um, it's very specifically, um, the information is very specifically owned by the district. But Deirdre had brought up a point about you know using your personal devices. Mm -hmm. Is that appropriate if, for any reason, we come up with you know tablets well, versus? I would yeah. just say before we, I think that's just one of the questions that you guys have mm -hmm. to explore. Okay. You know, yeah. like so there's no rule against having people use their own personal devices for. It's really. I think, I think the rules are about sort of security and yeah. and that as that intersects with personal devices. Okay. Or alternately, if we get devices, what does that mean about people yeah. having district-owned devices right. and what are they used for? Right. And so an ease of use issue, right? You have your device, that's for, but you can't be Do doing your use. personal email on it. Right. You know? yeah. So those are the kinds of questions that have to be resolved, right? Yes. Which I know you're just dying to. <laughs> no, it's, it's, um, it's very much a district-specific uh, decision because some districts have a culture where um, they will approach use of personal devices one way and another district will be completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, as far as I know, hard and fast rules because um, both models, several models are out there. Um, so it's really something for a board to look at in depth and then come to a, what what works here? What do we think is the right way? If, you know, mm -hmm. if the decision is to go right, right, great, yeah, 
So there are a lot of issues, yeah. right? <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Go to other board meetings. Watch how they do it. <laughs> you must know, right? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions or comments on that? Okay. Thank you. That's great. And um, we'll move on then to comments. Does anyone have any good news? I'll wait till other for mine. Oh, oh it is. Well, okay, well, did, did you have good news you want to share? Well, I did have some good news I wanted to share um, about the Rhinebeck Rhinebach Exchange program, which just concluded about a week ago, and I think Mark will tell us more about it under other, but uh, I simply wanted to say how magnificent it was to see the facility of, of our schools and, and also at the auditorium filled the capacity with um, families from our district and adjacent districts um, with the visitors from Germany making music together. It was a truly uh, wonderful cultural yeah. exchange. So um, it was great for our district. That's and great. thank you, Mark, for your, um, your leadership in, in all of that. Yes, I know, Mark, you were quite uh, cr critical to that. So <laughs> <laughs> that is very good news. Any other good news? Okay, then we'll move on to old business. Um, I have a couple. So one of them is um, uh, Deirdre and I have been working on crafting a letter to parents about the state test scores. And of course, last week there was lots of media attention to um, the drop in test scores and what does that mean. And so um, we've actually crafted it. We've shared it with Joe because of vacation schedules and the Germans and whatnot, um, we're, we're really sort of concluding something that we feel like we can share with our colleagues to see if people um, uh, feel it's something that the full board can support. Um, and so I would anticipate um, in the next couple of days sending out our draft or by the end of the week that then I'd like to get some feedback from people. It is challenging with people away on vacation, um, but I would, I'm hoping that we can come to some sort of conclusion uh, about, you know, or some consensus to support a letter like that that we could send out, um, uh, perhaps both from the board and from Joe mm -hmm. together, uh, about how we are understanding the Common Core and the state test scores is. Joe, maybe you could share with us how the process is for parents to be notified of what those scores are. Yeah, for their I mean, individual typically, <clears throat> and I haven't uh, received any information to lead me to believe that it's going to work differently this year. But typically, within a couple of weeks after they, you know, the commissioner releases the information and uh, there, there's a big, you know, it's a big media event. They will uh, send us the individual scores, you know, the scores for the individual children, and then we will arrange through the Regional Information Center to print out an individual report for each mm -hmm. child, grades uh, three through eight, and um, send, you know, mail them home to the parents. Okay. Uh, I believe typically there's, if, if the score uh, suggests that the, the student uh, uh, needs to receive AIS services. I believe there's a letter that's put in there that says your, your child will need uh, additional services in mathematics and, and that also provides us now with the list of kids who need to receive services mm -hmm. because uh, you know while they ramped up the uh, um, ramped up the uh, uh, the expectations and the scores statewide were, as expected, lower than they've been. To the best of my knowledge, they haven't lowered the threshold for having to provide academic intervention services. And as we had been concerned about during budget time, uh, and we're just starting to process this now, uh, you know, we would anticipate if the scores are lower across the board, that means more children will be required to have that extra service and that, that potentially creates all sorts of issues from a staffing perspective, also from a scheduling perspective. 
because there are only so many hours in the day, and if you have to provide AIS, that means uh, maybe Johnny or Susie aren't able to take some other course that they would have ordinarily. Yeah, it's it's it gets complicated, mm -hmm. and you know, and some parents are concerned about that, and uh, understandably so. So I, my guess is that they, those things will go out within the next couple of weeks. I mean, they typically they go home before the school year starts because mm -hmm. kids need to be placed in, a, some will need to be placed in, in, in AIS, scheduled for AIS. Um, in terms of the timing of the letter, I, mean, I don't think there's any drop dead date beyond which it doesn't make sense to, to send it, but I'm thinking where we're at right now in a perfect world, if we could get board consensus at the next meeting and be able to send that letter out to our parents at the beginning of the school year. I mean, I think that's the time when everybody's radar is is up regarding school stuff. You know, later in the year, other things occupy people and there isn't nearly the same level of interest and attention as there is at the start of the school year. So I think that would be a good time to, if we, if we can reach consensus as, as a board on that letter, to send that out to our parents um, and uh, it also maybe puts, gives them a context for the scores that they've just recently received. They kind of, it may make more sense to them given, you know, in the, in the context mm -hmm. of that letter, uh, you know, when the letter goes to the state education department and Governor Cuomo and the legislature probably is less critical in my way of thinking than when parents get it in a way that they can kind of start to connect the dots. So mm -hmm. if we could do that, that'd be great. Uh, I wouldn't rush consensus on a letter that's that important just to, to meet an artificial timeline. But, you know, if it's reasonable to coalesce on this letter at our next meeting and then be able to send it out, you know, right at the beginning of school, I think that would be ideal if, if it worked that way. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, John King also has sent a letter that I don't mm -hmm. know if you know, I don't know, like there's been media attention to a letter he sent yeah. to districts, and I'm curious if, and it's two parents, so is there, do you know, or maybe they haven't informed you yet, there's some expectations that districts also attach a letter from the commissioner in that letter, which mm -hmm. just to go further with that, what he seems to be saying is, oh, don't worry, your kids aren't learning any less. But if those students, some huge percentage more, have to go into academic intervention services, I'm not. I feel like those two things don't make any sense as far as an educational perspective. So, did Disney um, explain that letter? So I say, I'm still catching up on a week's worth of uh, yeah, emails yeah. here. Okay, so, I'm, so now I'm a little well, bit behind the curve. But does look it, into so explaining that no. letter why we decide to give the test a year earlier uh -huh. than. We needed to right. in New York State. <laughs> no, he, yeah. just, he just says, don't worry, the kids aren't yeah. learning okay. any less. But then, of yeah, course, the kids these kids right. might be going, your student is going to be in academic intervention services. And um, so um, I think, um, you know, I would, in, in my own world, I would love to be able to send it ahead of the test scores so parents could understand, have some context before they get scores that they might feel alarmed by. Um, but I realize yeah. we also have people away and as you said we don't want to rush consensus um, unnecessarily but I think you know I think our hope had been to try and alleviate stress for parents because it will be stressful for kids who for a whole per number of kids who are going to unless the state changes its mind the next couple of weeks which is always an option on there yeah. their I'm not here now get a a academic <laughs> intervention services so um, so it'll be a challenge for us, but um, I'd like us to try and get it done as soon as mm -hmm. possible. But I recognize that all summer has been challenging with this information. Um, any questions or comments? Some more on that? Yeah. Question. Um, Joe, how quickly are we able to react to the news of additional AIS requirements and things like that? In terms of moving kids' schedules around, well, we'll we'll do it right away. I mean, well, I, yeah, but is it is it cumbersome in a way no. that might make the beginning of school difficult? Yeah, I my my sense is not. I mean, it's you know the the our building principals know that this was a potential outcome of that, so it's not like it's they're not getting blindsided 
but it's obviously we didn't know what the what the scores were going to look like, and then generally, you know, we I, I think uh, uh, speaking broadly, we we fared better than we thought we might, but still the context was like you, you had no idea how much of a decrease there might be and how how it might affect uh, uh, AIS. So. Uh, I mean, we, we reacted a couple of years ago when they changed the cut point uh, on the old tests pretty late in the game, and we, you know, it didn't, it didn't ruin our year. I mean, you know, we, we responded, at, and, and I think we'll be fine. I mean, I think our, our again, our building principals are kind of expecting that they're going to have to do something, and they'll, I don't anticipate a problem with that. I mean, I think, I think the bigger issue is going to be staffing. Um, I mean, for example, we're you know we're we're looking to hire a, a math teacher, and when we hired a teacher earlier in the year at a point eight FTE, you know, Ed talked to me just the other day, and he said we're, we're probably going to want to hire that person as full time and have that person teach uh, a couple sections of AIS uh, and looking at some of our other math staff. Again, just speaking of the high school, because mm -hmm. he's the only one I've had this conversation with. Since I've been back, that uh, you know, there may be some some math teachers that uh, uh, that he'll be asking if they would be willing to pick up uh, you know a voluntary sixth class to mm -hmm. to backfill some of this need. Uh, you know, we didn't we didn't want to go crazy and budget for a bunch of teachers not having any idea how much more teaching time we needed. But we you know I think we uh, we addressed. That contingency to a to a certain extent in our budgets. So now we have to see how the numbers actually fall out and and what we actually need. That that'll be more difficult, especially if it turns out that we need to hire more people. I mean, again, I don't even know that we're anticipating that at this point. We may be able to absorb it within our you know within our current staff with some reorganizing. If if it turns out that we have to go out and hire people, it'll take. It's a while to hire people. You know, you post it in the interview, and then you guys right. know that that you know is a good six weeks or so from start to finish on a very aggressive schedule to get new staff in. I don't think we're going to have to do that, but I'll wait till I get the final word from the building principals. Right, and you know, I'll just share on this topic. One of my cons you know, one of my many concerns is, um, you know, children who are going to be very upset about this and um, you know we talked about how the tests were given the administration of the test was highly problematic um, forget about the content but just the administration and I'm more concerned I'm less concerned about our staffing capabilities than I am about how the beginning of the school year is for children who are feeling like um, they're they have failed something and you know I think um, we try to keep a really good focus in this school community on, you know, everyone's strengths and values and like you, everyone's trying to do their best, but if wholesale kids are feeling like, oh my gosh, um, I'm, I'm not a good student anymore, I don't know that, I thought I was, you know, that's, that's a, that could be a, a climate issue for our kids and that's where the most important thing is, especially when you have the commissioner saying, well, they're not learning any less, but I'm going to tell you, little person, what your time is going to be like now and, and your classroom day that might be really different. And I think, um, so, um, and so I'm wondering um, if would the, I don't know what the schedule is for our principal's reports, but if in September, if they could be prepared to um, let us know how the test scores, the AS scheduling, and staffing issues, um, how, how it's all playing out for, in classrooms for kids and for teachers. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I just do find that uh, this bizarre juxtaposition of the commissioner saying, no big deal, and yet it is a big deal, so. Yeah, we'll do that for sure. Okay, anything else on that topic? You'll, you'll get a letter, you know, we'll send out our letter. Also, I have under old business just to, to communicate what Diane Contreras had communicated from the audit committee, that the focused audit on the lunch program was completed, and at some point 
there'll be a presentation from the committee to the full board on that. Do you have any, anyone else have any old business? Mm -hmm. Okay, then move on to a second opportunity for public comment. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on then to other. Mark. So I, I think everybody here knows that I'm the president of the Rhinebeck Rhinebach Exchange Program, <laughs> at least you do now if you did before. <laughs> Um, I would just like to publicly thank the school district for um, allowing the exchange to use the school facilities. Um, it was really wonderful to, um, to ha you know, the exchange is a music program, so uh, it's really great to have three rehearsal spaces that can all be going at one time uh, for band, orchestra, and chorus all rehearsing in the same general area all at the same time for two hours every other day for two weeks. And also, um, you know, I, this is my, was my first experience actually managing the, uh, the Germans' visit. So, um, you know, to be able to mobilize, you know, 170 people to get dropped off, uh, get on buses, go places, come back, get dropped off again, and then get picked up by, uh, you know, roughly 100 host families uh, is really great to have the you know, the parking facilities and the school bus circle and, and all that to, to be able to get all that done. Uh, in addition to being able to use the auditorium for the uh, for our gala concert, which is uh, a really wonderful event. And uh, I meant to bring the picture tonight. I have a picture of um, the final number, which is uh, all 200 participants up on the stage uh, performing uh, the Brotherhood of Man. Uh, the orchestra, the band, and the choir all at once, and uh, so it was a really great picture that we got, so I'll try to remember to bring yeah. that next time. And there will be an article in the Hudson Valley News tomorrow, so oh, great. To pick one of those up. That's terrific. That is a really, you know, when I think back to our facilities project, and it failed the first time around, and it was passed, and here we are how many years later, and what a fantastic use of the the facilities for something that impacts a lot of the students in our community. I mean, a lot of families and children. So that's sort of that's a wonderful thing. And I'll just add, you know, we had a get together last week, and uh, we were looking at pictures of um, rehearsals going on in the old Bulkley Middle School in the gym over there. You know, and what a difference it is to have you know the two rehearsal rooms and you know a full auditorium to practice in. That's you, great. You get ready for three concerts. So that's wonderful. That's, really that's great. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you. Excellent. Um, any other other? I wanted to well, just a couple of things I wanted to note in FYI that um, Joe shared with us the New York State Master Teacher Program information, and I I just wanted to point it out because a couple of things that came up in board goals ideas, I think one of them might have been from, from you, Laura, was to, you know, celebrate more um, of staff and, and student activities and whatnot. But I thought, you know, this might be something people want to mull over as a possibility for some way the district might want to intersect with, like, how do we encourage staff or support staff who might want to take uh, advantage of this um, opportunity through New York State uh, to become a master teacher. So I, I just would encourage people to look at it and as we think whether it's through personnel or as a goal or, you know, it, it seemed to me to intersect in certain ways. And, and one thing it made me think of also was that um, several of our teachers have become nationally board certified mm -hmm. teachers. And um, when that first started, teachers in this district doing that, um, three of the teachers came and presented periodically their work and, and what the process was like and the importance of the process. And then I didn't really realize that other teachers have been doing it <laughs> since then. So all of this is my way of saying that this, by you putting this in FYI, Joe, it made me think, gee, as we're talking about trying to support our teachers in professional development and celebrate their accomplishments, maybe we should be thinking about all of this in a more uh, explicit, formal, structured way somehow because mm -hmm. that all seemed to kind of coalesce um, and sort of take it out of the board packet and, and bring it more visible. So that's one thing I want to highlight. And then, um, Joe, you also had, 
gave us all a copy of this. Is this from a, a workshop? Here? Yes, or? that was from the uh, Mid Hudson School Study Council's law conference, which okay. happened on April uh, on August second, and also provided those of you who aren't at the NISBA law conference with the handouts from right. that conference too. So there's there's. A lot of stuff there, but uh, some of it's pretty good stuff. So okay, thank you for sharing yeah. that. I just wanted to highlight mm -hmm. some of the, you know you, you, the stuff you put in FYI is really very useful and it can be um, neglected at the back of the book. But I think cool. basically uh, it, it's going to help inform a lot of what we do. So any other other okay? Then we'll move on to our action items. Does anyone have anything they want to remove from the consent agenda? Okay, then I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the consent agenda. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Second. Laura. <laughs> All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve as a final reading and adoption of modifications to board policy number 5280, Interscholastic Athletics and board policy number 5300, Code of Conduct. So moved. By Mark, seconded by Deirdre. Although, uh, any questions or comments? Laura. I have, um, there is a discrepancy between the policy and then what's going in the handbook. Um, I'll put my finger on it. Um, the policy is, seems to be striking Prior to selecting team members, each coach first will establish the maximum number of student athletes able to be kept on the team based on the requirements, but in uh, 6.2.12, it is still in there. Okay, well, uh, thanks, thanks for bringing that to my to my attention. But before anything goes in the, in the athletic handbook, I'll make sure to take that direction. What I was wondering, if there was a reason why maybe the I mean, which could be an answer, like whether mm -hmm. it's different. What's expected in policy might be a little more general versus... Yeah, I'll go back yeah. and review it, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions about that? I would like to um, just thank Steve Boucher for the work he did in um, putting together um, the whole goals, principles, and philosophy of the program for parents. Uh, and, you know, that was something that um, the board had wanted to see at the beginning of last year. And I think, um, you know, I just want to share what you share with me, Joe, that that process apparently was a really important process to communicate with coaches, to develop this is not just good for parents and students, but was a process that I'm hopeful it was good for the entire athletic program and the coaches. So, um, I just want to thank mm -hmm. Steve for putting in a lot of hours to make that happen. Um, and then, you know, so what we're voting on is 5280. This is actually, you know, for the athletic program to distribute. Right. Any other questions? Or? Okay. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to appoint Samantha Robbins as athletic trainer for the 2013-14 school year at a stipend of $28,905 in accordance with the RTA salary schedule for 2013-14. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Second. Laura. Any questions? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve additional summer 2013 program curriculum and clerical work. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Deirdre. Any questions? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby authorizes the district clerk to notify the Department of State pursuant to the requirements of a newly enacted section 53.3 of the General Municipal Law that a copy of every notice of claim served upon the Secretary of State regarding the Rhinebeck Central School District must be transmitted to the office of the district clerk in accordance with the provisions of section 50-E3F of the General Municipal Law and be it further resolved that the district clerk is hereby authorized to take those actions necessary to complete the filing of the district's certificate of designation for service of notice of claim 
with the Department of State, effective July 15, 2013. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Laura. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, we move on. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve mentors for the 2013-14 school year? So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Deirdre. Any questions? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of David Airstock as district health and wellness coordinator for the 2013-14 school year at a stipend of $4,531 in accordance with the RTA salary schedule 2013-14. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Laura. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of Fern Locks to the tenure position of elementary assistant principal assigned to Chancellor Livingston Elementary School? A three-year probationary position with an annual 12-month salary of $88,500 prorated, including benefits as described in the Rhinebeck Administrator's Association Agreement, effective August 26, 2013. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Deirdre. Any questions? Um, I did have one quick question about the, um, the job description mm -hmm. that you sent around. It's listed that she's going to do uh, reviews of staff mm -hmm. as required by uh, the principal. Is she going to be doing most of them? Do you have any sense of how they're going to break up? Uh, I, I don't think they'll have a sense of that until we get started, probably. The, the building principal will do the majority of them, but uh, uh, part of our intent in creating this position was that that person is going to have to pick up you know, a good chunk of the slack, and, and she still needs to be trained in the Danielson 2011 models, so she won't be starting on the first day in September doing that either. She's going to have a learning curve to get up to speed. So, uh, but I, I don't anticipate it will be the majority of the uh, evaluations, but I think it'll be a significant number ultimately. Okay. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of Stacy Vandenthorn to the civil service position of senior typist with a probationary period of 26 weeks, effective August 19, 2013, at a salary of step six, $38,556 prorated in accordance with the ANE 2012-13 salary schedule. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Laura. Any questions? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the fall coaching staff for the 2013-14 school year. Soccer, boys modified, David Jutton, $2,231. Volleyball modified, Lisa Christofik, $2,231. Cross country, boys varsity, John Lombardo, $3,354. Girls varsity, Chris Sneed, $3,354. Golf Varsity, Ted Salter, $2,722. Field Hockey Varsity, Mary Fleischauer, $4,381. Swimming Girls Varsity, Chrysia Loyola, $4,381. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Deirdre. Any questions? All those in favor? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, go question. ahead. Is there going to be a JV field hockey? Thing? No. No, okay. Right. Yes, and I'm very glad to see we have a varsity coach. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the selection of Big, math, Big Ideas Math Advanced 1 and Big Ideas Math Advanced 2, 2014, Big Ideas Learning, LLC, Erie, Pennsylvania, distributed by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt as the textbooks for the grade 6 and grade 7 accelerated mathematics courses. So moved. By Mark. Uh, seconded by Laura. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of Roberta Anderson as high school musical choreographer for the 2013-14 school year at a stipend of $2,299 in accordance with the RTA salary schedule 2013-14. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Deirdre. Any questions? All those in favor? 
That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools to approve the recommendation of David Airstock to conduct selection, classification, fitness testing for the 2013-14 sports season as necessary. So moved. By Mark. Seconded Second. by Laura. Any questions? I, I have a question. Approximately, do we have any idea how many um, students actually attempt this? It, it, it varies, varies from widely. season to season. I, mean, I don't, I, you know, typically we're not talking about dozens yeah. of kids. A handful, okay. usually. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion to appoint Margaret Tedisco as district clerk pro tem, effective July 1st, 2013, until the Board of Education meeting following the appointment of a new district clerk? So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Laura. Any questions? Again, thank you, Meg. <laughs> All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following resolution? Be it resolved that the superintendent is hereby authorized to direct a comprehensive medical examination and evaluation, including psychiatric psychological examination and evaluation, if necessary, of employee number 1832 in accordance with the provisions of section 913 of the education law. Be it further resolved that the board hereby directs that employee number 1832 submit medical records, if any, from the last two years to the school appointed physician at or before such examination evaluation. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by. Laura, any questions? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to adopt <clears throat> the resolution to confirm tax rolls and authorize the tax levy for the 2013-14 school year. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Deirdre. Any questions? Meg. Um, oh, no. It's actually the next motion, but I just wanted We need a roll call the next one. Um, roll call on the next one, and also um, before everybody leaves, I need to get signatures. Okay, great. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to issue the tax warrant to the school tax collector to collect taxes in the total sum of $25,494,160 exclusive of star reimbursements. The tax collector is not responsible for the collection of that portion of the warrant. The collection period begins September 3rd, 2013 and ends on November 1st, 2013. 2013. So moved. By Mark. Second. Second by Laura. Any discussion? Oh, so you need a roll call vote, right? Uh, Deirdre, how do you vote? Yes. Mark? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I vote aye. That motion passes. Okay, then we move on to motion. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve 2012 13 budget transfers in accordance with Board of Education Policy number 6150 for the school year ending June 30th, 2013. So moved. By Mark, seconded by Laura. Second. Yeah, they're the, new, the newest. Uh, Budget transfer items are at your place if you have any mm -hmm. chance to look at them. Any questions? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to accept library gift book donations to benefit the Chancellor Livingston Elementary School Library from CLS parents through the Rhinebeck PTSO in the total amount of $1,210 and a mini grant in the amount of $478.05 for the purchase of balloons for the BMS Veterans Day Assembly, ice cream for the Moving Up Ceremony, and the Field Day Dunk Tank. The total amount of donations is $1,688.05. So moved. By Mark. Second. Oh, seconded by Deirdre. I saw first. Uh, any questions? Well, thank you to the PTSO and to the parents of Chancellor Livingston. Especially for the and the dunk tank, tank which is a new a new item, which I know our administrators are oh, just yes. so happy yes. to get this donation yes. once again. I'm hoping for so a one year great. tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it's well. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, be great. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the con correction of the appointment of two part-time teachers at the July 9th, 2013 meeting. The appointment should have read, 
Vaughn Johnson, 0.8 FTE Art Teacher, Step 3, BA plus 1, $43,809.60 prorated. Allison Vaccarino, 0.4 FTE Computer CLS, Step 6, MA plus 3, $26,508.80 prorated. So moved. By Mark. Seconded by Second. Laura. Any questions? Those were just smaller errors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Guess, yeah. Just what was highlighted. The clerical errors, right? right. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of discussion of uh, particular uh, staff? So moved. By Mark. Seconded. Seconded by Deirdre. All those in favor? That's unanimous. We're moving into executive session.